Okay, in this video I'm going to look at a few problems using the SUVAT formulae that I've uh, described in a previous video. And just as a reminder, here they are, S equals a half U plus VT, V equals U plus AT, and I think of those two as the main ones, you can derive the other three from those ones. Uh, S equals UT plus half AT squared, S equals VT minus a half AT squared, and V squared is U squared plus 2AS. So see my video on deriving them if you want to understand where they all come from. Um, but we're going to use those and apply them to different problems. So remember, we must have constant acceleration. So actually, when I'm talking about any acceleration in this video, it's going to be a constant acceleration. Sometimes these are called the constant acceleration formulae instead of the SUVAT formulae. And actually, if you have the formula in front of you, it's not too bad. So let's have a look at how we'd solve a problem. A car starts from rest. So starting from rest means that u, which is the initial velocity, is zero and accelerates at 1.5 meters per second squared, so my acceleration is going to be 1.5, until it reaches 30 meters per second, so that's the final speed, the final velocity, I should say, which is 30, and actually I don't know here s or t, and they're the two things that we want to work out. So I could actually do this in either order here, but let's start by working out s. Now I've got u, a, and v, and I want s, so I need to look at these equations and say, okay, which one has u, a, v, and s in it? And so I look down the list, and I see ah, it's this one here, u, a, v, and s. So I've got v squared equals u squared plus 2, a, s, and if I substitute the numbers I've got in, that's 30 squared is 0 squared plus 2 times 1.5 times s. So if I rearrange this, OK, I've got 900 equals 3s. So s must be 900 over 3. So that's 300 meters. All of my units here are meters and seconds. OK, so I've now actually also got that s is 300. So I do have a bit of a choice as to which of the equations to use to find t. But I would generally prefer still just to use the one that has u, a, v in it and t, just in case I've made a mistake with s. If I haven't used the one that I've worked out, then I'll um, I'll be able to, uh, you know, I, w I won't follow through any errors if I have made them. Hopefully I haven't. Um, so let's look for the one with u, a, v and t in it, and that's this one here, v equals u plus a, t. So let's make some space uh, for this. v equals u plus a, t, and I've got 30 equals 0 plus 1.5t, so here I just have to do t equals 30 divided by 1.5, which gives me 20 seconds, and that's that. Okay, here's another one then, I've got an object accelerating from rest to 30 meters per second in a distance of 25 meters, and I'm going to assume the acceleration is constant, if so, what is its acceleration? Okay, well again, let's write down uh, sometimes people actually like to write this in the order, S-U-V-A-T. Uh, I've got here, f starts from rest, so initial velocity is 0. 30 meters per second is the final velocity. Distance is 25 meters. And I want to find the acceleration. So I need the one that has S, U, V, and A in it. So here we go, V, U. Um, so I've got V squared is U squared plus 2 A, S. That's the one that has those four things in it. So I've got 900 is 0 plus 2 times 25 times s. So 900 is 50 s. So s is 900 over 50, which is equal to, um, oh, I've made a mistake here, haven't I? 2 times 25 times a, sorry. Um, okay, so uh, a here, not s, is 18 meters per second squared. Okay, so all the numbers were fine, I just wrote A instead of S here. Um, but I just substitute them in and rearrange to find the thing that I'm interested in. So here's another problem, I've got a car travelling at 20 meters per second and it's going to take a distance of 30 meters to break to a stop. So it's quite similar in a way here, but I've got, uh, this time I've got uh, the U is 20 meters per second it's going to stop, so that means that the final velocity is going to be 0. The distance is 30 meters. Now, I haven't actually said what I want here, but let's see if we can find, say, the... Well, let's do both. Let's find the acceleration and the time. Okay, so firstly, the acceleration, that's S, U, V, and A. So again, 
uh, that's just the one, that's just v squared is u squared plus 2as, so this time I've got 0 equals u squared, which is 400, plus 60, uh, sorry, plus that again, um, plus 60a, so a is minus 400 over 60, so that's minus 20 over 3 meters per second squared, and this is going to happen, I've got negative acceleration here because um, rather than going from rest to a higher speed, it's going from a certain speed down to zero. So it's decelerating. Okay, and now the one that has S, U, V, and T in it, that's S equals one half U plus V times T. So if I wanted to find T, I could say, okay, 30 um, equals one half times zero plus 20 multiplied by t, so half times 20, that's 10, so I've got t equals 30 divided by 10, so that would take three seconds. Okay, here's a slightly uh, trickier problem then. I'm going to have a particle that starts here, uh, and it's going to start traveling in this direction at a speed of three meters per second, but its constant acceleration is in this direction at one meter per second squared. So what that means is, to start off with, it will go in this direction, but it will be decelerating. So it's going in this direction, but accelerating in this direction. So its speed is its speed is reducing. At some point, it will come to rest over here, and then start accelerating back in this direction at one meter per second squared. Now, the nice thing about the SUVAT equations is they can handle all of this just in a single uh, model without having to. So sometimes people worry that they've got to find the point where it stops over here, and then um, and then uh, you know work out that distance and then or time and then have another problem of it going in this direction. But actually, it's all part of one problem. So here, uh, all we've got to do is be very careful to choose a direction. Okay. So uh, and I'm going to make that direction positive. So let's say actually this direction is the positive direction. Okay. So that means that my initial velocity u is going the opposite way. So that's minus three. But my acceleration is plus one. Notice how the acceleration arrow has two heads on it usually, and our velocity just has one. So, um, and actually the distance here, remember this uh, distance travel is really displacement. I think I've used the word distance in this video, but really this should be displacement. So um, I'm going to end 20 meters to the right of where I started. And actually that difference between distance and displacement is, is important when you've got a problem like this where okay, the displacement at the end is going to be 20 meters, although the total distance traveled will be more. If I wanted to work that out, then I would have to, you know, perhaps think about, you know, when does it come to rest over here or something. Um, but just the displacement is 20. Okay, so uh, so that's everything that I know. And let's say uh, I want to know uh, how long it's going to take to do this whole journey, then I want to work out T. Okay, so I've got S, U, A, and T. So I need to use uh, S equals UT plus one half AT squared. S is 20, U is minus 3, T is just T, and now I've got a half times A times T squared, so plus a half T squared. So I've actually got a quadratic equation in T here. So let's just tidy this up and say 0, I'm going to multiply it all by 2 and bring everything to the right hand side, so 0 equals T squared minus 6t minus 40, and that factorizes as t uh, minus 10 times t plus 4, so I've got t equals uh, 10 or minus 4. Okay. Now, so it looks like there's two possible answers here, but of course t equals 10 is the only sensible one. Uh, I'm, I'm starting here and I want to know when does it end up over here, so 10 seconds is the answer, plus 10, not minus 4. Um, now, this minus 4 solution, you might worry about a little bit, because, okay, it's come out in the maths. What does that mean? Well, actually, if you imagine this problem, if, it, if I could have started this problem 4 seconds earlier, and you know, if I'd started 4 seconds earlier, what it's saying is, okay, if I start here 4 seconds earlier, and... Uh, then I could end up in this position four seconds later at the start of this problem. Okay, so 
with an acceleration of one meter per second squared in this direction, um, I could find a speed to start with here that would get me to this point at a speed of three meters per second. So this is kind of like a phantom solution. It does fit as part of the model. Um, it could be a, a reasonable answer in a sense that you could say, okay, well, uh, I might have been there minus four seconds ago uh, if actually this wasn't the start point, if I'd been moving previously to get to this point at this speed and this acceleration. I would have been there four seconds ago. But the answer to the problem that we want is that, okay, now I go this way a little bit and then I come back, and, in, and that 10 seconds has wrapped up that whole journey of going this way and then back here. In the next video, I'm going to look at on problems with gravity, and then we'll look at this idea again of that whole time being wrapped up a little bit more carefully um, when we look at some harder problems there.